Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to you all, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Resident Evil Remake. You are here with Morris at the end of the last part. Where we're just figuring out quite how to get into the uh, the room which houses all the chemicals necessary to make V-Jolt, which is chemical necessary to beat Plant 42, which is boss fight necessary to get an item, which is necessary to do the rest of the game. So This might not seem very important right now, but believe me, it is. <laughs> Strange silhouette hovers in the reddish light. Reddish light. Okay then. Might be slightly confusing. So we've got reddish, we got green, definite green. An orange oil lamp. It's not lit. Okay. It's the final one. Okay, so that's uh That one's got wait, that's definitely orange then, isn't it? Okay, so that's got two little kind of eyelashes on it. So let's remember that. God, who the hell would set up a door mechanism this way, honestly? <laughs> Alright, what else we got? We got green, which has three little sort of eyelashes. Four, actually. So just, just try and remember the symbols for when we actually get back to the lock. The numbers will come separately. And then that kind of has... It looks like a Orochimaru or something, those eyes. Okay. And that's red. So red, green, and orange. Actually, if we have the three digits, it shouldn't be that difficult anyway. Okay. I'm going to write these down just in case. Red, green, and orange. So it's three, five, and six. Easy enough. It's interesting now that this puzzle has uh, become more challenging. Hang on. Hang on a second. Okay, so three. <laughs> I just need to. Just need to make sure of something. Okay. Just writing down what they actually are. That's red. That's orange. Six is green. Again, I'm probably overcomplicating it more than the game is, but there you go. That's kind of, it's kind of uh, a staple of this channel, I feel, is overcomplicating things, overthinking things. I gotta put something in these notepads, honestly. Okay, so that's two of those, right? Got it. Okay, it's, it's, it's all good. I got, I got everything I need now. <laughs> Alright, let's get out of here. It's all good. Always have a pen and paper on you for these games. Ah, feels good. Feels nice. Alright, let's move on. Uh, actually, I actually don't think we need the lighter. So we'll just dump that back in here. Mmm. Fresh cup of Yorkshire tea. Beautiful. I've actually been recording the last few episodes back to back. So it's nice to have something to warm the throat after all this talking. <laughs> ah, alright, so red herb, away with you. Lighter, away with you. I'm actually going to need quite a bit of inventory space for uh, this next puzzle. Yeah, I've spoke quite. I've spoke at some length in the past about how I enjoy having a uh, pen and paper next to me when I play these old games. <laughs> it's very involving. And I mean, what games do it now? Come on. Not many I can think of. All right, let's see if we can bust in here, shall we? Lock mechanism for the door. Use it. Absolutely. Okay. So this one was the green one, which is number six. This one was the orange one, which was number five. And this one was the red one, which leaves number three. Aha! Beautiful. Uh, so yeah, the, the, a lot easier on, the, on easy, which you might think is obvious, but... How many, how many games really do that? How many games affect the puzzle based on what difficulty you pick? I mean, the only other game I can think of 
would be uh, would be the old Silent Hill. I think Silent Hill two does it, and Silent Hill three it actually has. Mm. It's good tea. Actually has separate difficulty menus when you start the game. It's like okay, so what do you want the combat difficulty to be? Difficulty to be, and what do you want the puzzle difficulty to be? Which I think is a really smart move, and more games should probably do that. Okay, I think there's a note in here which pretty much explains everything. Yeah, here we go. One plus three is four. Okay. Well, that answers all my <laughs> all my questions. One plus three is four. Okay, so we need, I'm not sure how many of these we need, maybe only, we'll, we'll pick up three just in case. Uh, and I'm sure there's a note lying around somewhere which just, oh no, we picked it up, didn't it? It, it told us all the, uh, all the different, well, all the different chemicals and what, what the corresponding numbers and colours are. Um, so we need to, could really do with having that to hand, actually. Um, I know we need one with water, so we'll just pump that in there. Um, okay, let's check what these are. Yellow is six. Okay, we don't need that just yet. Number three. Okay, I think we need some of this. Now, you only get one shot at this. So, if we fail, it's going to be really bad news. <laughs> Alright, so... One plus three is four. Okay, so what we do, because water corresponds to one, and UMB number three corresponds to number three, combine these to make UMB number four, or NB number four, whatever. Then the next sum on the wall is four plus six is 10. So what we wanna do there is we wanna take sum of six, combine it with the four to make 10. Then we'll leave that alone for a little while. And what's next? One plus six is seven. Hmm. So we need to fill another one up with water. Beautiful. And we need to fill one up with just straight six. And then we combine those two to make seven. Then I believe it's ten plus seven for seventeen. This will all make sense eventually, don't worry. And then we just need one for three. And boom, we got Vigil, baby. So there you go. Easy as that. And I'm a lot easier than, I mean, I guess I've done it before now. So, you know, mm. not really as much to think about there. Um, but it's worth mentioning that it took a while, first time I did it. And certainly, if you remember the painful experience that was the original playthrough that I did. If you haven't seen that, please do go check it out. Um, but yeah, it took, me, it took me a little while when I was trying to figure this out in the original. Anywho, it's the wrong way. Um, I actually need to go back down the ladder and administer this VGL to one of the roots. Which is down in the basement. Or the aqua ring, if you want to be super technical about it. I mean, we're climbing down a ladder into a spooky corridor. It's, it's For me, it's a basement. Luckily, we won't be fighting any sharks this time around. It's not a sentence you say often. to head back down here and into a door that we didn't actually go into last time. Oh, actually, I think this might be the... Am I going the long way around? I think I am actually going the long way around. Oh, well. We're, 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 <laughs> we're down here now, so we might as well keep going. Don't know. I always, I always assume that door I just went through is a... is a shortcut. I don't know. Strange how the smaller the area gets, the more confused I seem to be. <laughs> yeah, we'll climb back up here. 
There's this door that we never actually went through when we originally came through here. Uh, for good reason, because... Well, I mean, there isn't a reason <laughs> to go in there originally. Oh, there's the other shark. <laughs> I did wonder. Uh, is there anything else actually up here? No. No more items? Okay. So, one of the roots should actually be in here. Yuck. And then what we can do is we can just splash a little V-Gel on there. Yeah! That's right. Why the next? You probably don't need the ball anymore. Throw it away? Yes. And luckily for us, that throws away all of them. And there's nothing else in this room. Uh, but yeah, this is where you want to come if you want... I guess the easy way to do the boss. <laughs> is the, uh, the simple way to, to, to put that. I mean, it's worth mentioning that, you know, for knife... That people do knife-only runs of this game, right? So... Plan 42 is technically a boss that can be knifed. Um, it's tough. The I've only ever done it on very easy, so God knows what it's like doing it on normal or hard. But yeah, if you want an even easier way of doing it, throw that visual on there. There's not going to be any water down here, is there? Shit, I knew it. <laughs> oh, that's why my brain thought it was a good idea to go through that door, because that's actually the only way. Okay, then. Man, this game's still playing its tricks on me. Makes perfect sense, though. We gotta go the long way. Now, you know, I've talk, been talking about how the difficulty seems to change the way this game is played. And, again, I can only really talk about my experience on easy. Which sounds a bit of a wimpish kind of <laughs> experience to have. And I would concur with that, but it's all I've got to go on. And uh, Vigil did the job on easy. You know, you go in, you get a little scene, and you get out. And, uh, whether it's the same way and normal, I don't actually know. But I'm gonna run in, and I'm gonna hope that it is the same. Otherwise, shit. If you jolt killed on easy, it might only weaken. Probably be better to have flame rounds with us. Fire eats grass, right? I mean, I haven't been a Pokemon fan that long, but I can say that with some confidence. <laughs> There's actually still something in that room. Maybe I missed. Maybe it's maybe it's referring to one of those bottles that I didn't pick up or a note or something. I'm just gonna go in there and check. I don't think there's anything. There's no ammo or anything left in there. I don't think. But I'll give it a cheeky look. Yeah, there's just the bottle there which I absolutely don't need. And I think that's it. Just drink the acid right up. Maybe not. <laughs> Alright, let's head in and see what happens. And if the worst does happen, <laughs> well... Ah, uh, this episode is going to be way more fun to edit. Yeah. 
Yeah, there you go. Wither, wither and die. Oops, where did that come from? What the hell is this thing? So, Barry, when you said you were going for some fresh air, what you really meant was build a flamethrower. Not that I'm complaining. You do your thing, Bazaar. Juices are on me. Get it off. <laughs> I thought it was finished. Yeah. Little did I know I was just getting started. That was close. Thanks again. Don't mention it. But what was that? What the hell's going on in this place? Come on, Barry. There's notes everywhere explaining everything. Gotta pay attention. So yeah, I'm super happy that that is how that works out. <laughs> and lo and behold, the one thing we've been missing this entire time. The final mansion key. Helmet key. To be specific. So there's only one place we can go with this. And that's back to the mansion. Let's go, Barry. He's just stood there. I don't know where his flamethrower went. Don't know where his flamethrower went. Probably should have kept that on him. Can I actually talk to him? Is he... <laughs> don't want to leave you high and dry, Barry. You know, you, you just saved my life. I don't have to run off without you or anything. Oh, no, he's in, he's doing some serious, serious stars investigating. Which involves lightly stroking the ground. Barry. I think I'll stay here a little longer. No explanation. Cool. All right, I'll go. <laughs> Yeah, maybe he's a botanist, you know? Maybe he's just into his plants. Can't blame him. This place is a gold mine. If you're if you that way inclined, you know? Alrighty, well, we gotta head right back to the mansion. Which shouldn't be too much of a bother. Oh! Wesker! Wesker! Jill, so you're safe. That's what I was going to you say. You have to sound so happy about I it. Apologize. It was all I could do to protect myself against those strange creatures. I understand. Yep, I've been anyway, having my own book problems myself. Did you notice, Barry? He sounded a little flaky. Now that you mention it, yeah, I'll keep a close eye. Maybe it's quite natural under these circumstances. Did it's you notice, Wesker, that it's actually not daytime or sunny, and you don't need those shades? Out of here. I agree. There are still rooms in that mansion we can't get into because they're locked up. I've been looking for ways to... Okay, if there's anything, I'll go back to the other mansion. I'm counting on you. I actually just found a key. I, Wesker, I actually just found... Wesker, we, Wesker, I found a key. Ah, oh, he's gone. Okay. <laughs> Nothing I can do. Alrighty, I think actually we can just run right across this because the plan is dead now, so this this corridor is safe. Thank God, we don't actually fall in the hole. Just stood on absolutely nothing there. But... Ah, alrighty. Let's have a, li a, li a little look at our uh, item box. You know, there's a uh, there's a mode on this hidden unlockable mode where the item boxes aren't connected to each other. So when you put something in an item box, it's only available from that one box and nowhere else. I mean, good god, that sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> that sounds like the nightmare. Okay, uh, we are going to need. Ink runes to save, and that's it. I think. <laughs> eh, what can I say? We've done, we've done quite a bit since we last saved, so... We'll get this nailed down. Let's 
So that's quite a, uh, it's quite a convenient section uh, during a Jill playthrough because not having to fight the boss and the overall just lack of enemies in that area. It's uh, it's really just a good opportunity to stock up on ammo and health and everything else for when you actually go back to the mansion. So if you can do that entire section without being hit, then that's really good. <laughs> Alright then, back we go. Say goodbye to the residents. It annoys me that that room is still red. Because the completionist in me wants to pick up that last jar just so it's not there, but there you go. Alright, back through the courtyard. And... Yeah, it should be, it should be pretty much a straight run. I don't think we'll encounter too many problems. Still got 28 shotgun shells, so... Let's hope we don't get battered by these snakes, which is a very real and threatening possibility. Oh, hello. Brad again. This is Jill. Does anybody hear me? Brad, Brad I hear you, would just Brad. land the damn Over. chopper. Stars Alpha Team. Bravo Team. Doesn't matter. Respond. I repeat, this is Brad. Brad? Brad! This is Brad. I know it's Brad. So Stop saying sign. that. Jill to Brad. Give me some kind of instructions here. Brad. Damn it. Brad. Stupid radio. Open. Shit. It's broken. That's like identical to the other cutscene. That <laughs> exact thing happens. <laughs> Still broken, Jill. I'm pissing about with all these chemicals and plants and everything. Not once have we tried to fix the radio, which seems like a much higher priority. Uh, okay, so let's uh, head back up. I think this... Yep, there they are. That dog nicely blending in with the floor so you don't quite see it. But yeah, that area is populated by dogs now rather than crows. But we don't have to go there for a little while, so... Here they come, the snakes. Uh, oh god, they came out of the friggin... Oh no, I'm poisoned. Oh, damn it. That's annoying. Ah, oh, that's what I was talking about the first time we rocked through this area. So that's gonna drain my health a lot faster than normal. I don't have any blue herbs on me. Ugh. I always forget where they come from. <laughs> and if you were thinking that's the last time, I'm gonna be hit. You were wrong. No dogs have respawned in there, which is really nice of them. I was very worried about that, but we're okay. Alright. Oh, hello. What have you left us, Barry? Because you know this is all his doing. Oh, yes. Battery pack. <laughs> That's like my favorite out of all these. Use this thing to protect yourself. Use this thing, because it changes every time on every difficulty, so. Use this thing to protect yourself from that bulletproof thing in chains. Uh, I went ahead and fixed that piece of crap door too, Barry. Thank you. Can you pick this up, Jill, please, before you just run out of grenade shells? Thank you. Before you run out of health. All right. Let's get back in the mansion. Let's get back in the safety of that other save room. I feel much better there. And we are back. Once again, another enemy introduction. From the point of view of the enemy itself. So good. Oh god. Oh. Okay, so we didn't get a good look at that. <laughs> but you were about to. So it's all good, don't worry. Uh. Go down, go down. Oh. Oh my god. Ugh. Oh. Oh. So that's... 
Ah, oh, it's also dead, that's fine. I'm just gonna go in here and heal and then we'll talk about what just happened. Ah, oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, so most of these zombies inside the mansion have now been replaced by what are known as hunters. And uh, truth to their name, they are deadly creatures with massive claws. They're the, you know, step up from crimson heads, I guess. With their size and their speed and their ability to just take your head clean off. Uh, if you are one of the unlucky ones. But yeah, there are still zombies knocking about, but there are uh, way more hunters now than ever. Um, and it's it's one of the... It, it, it's a really good place to introduce hunters, to be honest, because... I mentioned, you know, when you go back, when you leave the mansion, right, you do all that stuff in the residence, yeah, it's fine, you come back to the mansion, it feels like you're coming back to normality, right, when you get in, but then all of a sudden, introduces this new enemy type, you've got new rooms to go in, it's almost like, it's just, it's, it's amazing what you can do with the same space, you know, the dynamic of the game changes when you change the way the enemies move, and, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot more dangerous to just go running around the place now. <laughs> But fortunately, we won't have to deal... I mean, you, you know, you look at the pros and cons, we don't have to deal with Crimson Heads, but... These are just as bad. If not worse. So now we have plenty more doors to open. I mean, I guess the fortunate thing is, you're not really at a loss for where to go anymore, because the only doors that are left are the ones that can be opened. Either uh, by the key or just by straight up unlocking it from the other side, as they say. And I don't want to do this room yet. <laughs> There's other priorities. I think that takes you somewhere new, and I don't really want to go there just yet. Plenty more to be done. But yeah, this is weird now, because... All of a sudden... This place has become way more dangerous. You know, all, your, all the routes that you were... Uh, that maybe you planned out at the beginning of the game, maybe you got a bit of confidence in yourself, well I can go through these corridors, there's no enemies there, or I can dodge around those, everything's changed now, so even though we've explored all these rooms, we actually don't know what's in them. <laughs> I don't know, a really neat, just clever, simple way to change the dy dynamic of the mansion, you know. I don't know what's going to be in here, <laughs> but let's, uh, let's find out, shall we? Good lord of zombie. Wow, he doesn't even care. Oh god! Oh, Jesus. Oh, I didn't know he was there. Freaking hell. <laughs> Whew. My heart can't take that kind of stuff. As young as I used to be. On the key once again. I don't think there's as much going on down here. So it's probably better to explore here first. An elaborately fashioned globe. And what do we have here? There's something handwritten, it's not dated. Nothing's changed. I never thought that this room I designed as an experiment would pay off like this. I can hide here safely for a while because nobody knows about the secret behind this painting. Not even Sir Spencer. Painting of a mansion in the back of the art room. I see. There's some kind of internal organ inside. You can't tell whether it came from a human or an animal. You know what? I'm going to go with human, probably. Could this be a telescope? It looks to be pretty old. Yeah. Random ink ribbons. I'll take them. Okay, I get it. Internal organs? Get it. Anything else in here? Nope. This is the room I think it is. That'd be another very interesting camera angle. Ah. <laughs> oh, God. Super spooky that it... Uh... Oh, jeez. 
that it friggin' gives you that uh, that weird camera angle at the beginning, so you're not even sure where the enemy is actually coming from. Just again, another really good example of just using the space effectively. Because you kind of automatically, because you can see the enemy, you turn towards there and you'll aim, and then it'll auto aim over here, and you're like, what the hell am I aiming at? I know, it's just, it's really nice. Again, neat, simple. And again, all to do with the camera work. And I don't think we need to come back in here, so... It's fine that he's dead. Unless we get poisoned, but I don't think we will. I'm not sure why those blue herbs are there. Anyway, I am going to probably head to the save point inside the dining room. Seeing as that seems like the safest option uh, at the moment. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to say I'm going to have to pause it for now, guys. But thank you very much for watching this episode of Resident Evil Remake. And I do hope to see you in the next part, guys. We're going to unlock the final mysteries, or some of the final mysteries of this mansion. And see what else we can uncover. Uh, but yeah, I hope to see you for that, guys. And I will see you in a bit. See you in a little while. It's getting rough.